black shifts and four down seven. Estimate the square roots and world numbers. I can estimate square roots and find world numbers. Awesome, thank you, Deline. Now this part, estimating the square roots, we are going to do a little bit of it in this note here. Uh, but you did that in 4.5, or 4-5, right? Yeah. Okay, a real number. You're going to see a diagram here in a few moments, but it would be all rational and irrational numbers. Um, and then we just clarify the difference between a rational and irrational. Somebody want to explain the difference really quick so the video can pick up your voice? Danny, go. A rational number determines roots, and an irrational number doesn't come near. Give me an example of an irrational number. Um, six in seven times and then there's three dots. Okay, so something that never ends or repeats. What is the most famous irrational number? Pi. Okay, cool. Did we also found out down here when we went to number two what an approximation sign means? It's a squiggly equal. And this was what you did in your last lesson, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, estimating square roots. Okay, if I ask you to calculate um, to the nearest whole number, um, what a, uh, what a um, number would be closest to? A square, I'm a square number, I'm sorry, I'm not saying this right. Um, if I asked you to calculate to the nearest whole number what an integer would be closest to, you would just find the square root, square root right? Um, so this is just an example of a problem that I gave you in which you had a tablecloth that was 500 inches squared. You found the square root, um, which was, what did we say it was? 22.3 something, which is going to be closest to 22 inches for each side. This is the method you were using when you did the lesson with Miss Guzzi. You don't necessarily have to use that if you just find the square root. And then number three, real numbers. Real numbers are always what or what, everybody? Rational. They're always rational or irrational. Okay, so we know what an irrational number is. We know what rational numbers are. Um, when you are trying to figure out or you're classifying real numbers, our strategy says we start from the small box and we go to the bigger boxes. Okay? Uh, question like number five, and it is the square root of five. You probably need to calculate the square root of five in order to figure out, first of all, if it's a whole number, an integer, a rational, an irrational, and so on. On uh, number six, so Jake and Kyle, this is the one where you guys are a little confused, and I get it. I gave you negative 12 and 75 hundredths. There's nothing to calculate, right? So you just use that number to classify. Um, on number seven, there are some calculations again. 72 over 4. Do you have to calculate what 72 over 4 is? Yes. Yeah. yeah, 72 over 4 is 18, and 72 over 4 and 18 are whole numbers. Yes or no? Yes. Because 72 fourths equals 18. And then number eight, um, if it pops up as an error in your calculator, you know um, that it is not a real number at all. And then density property in your own words. Somebody explain to me the density property in your own words. Loudly pregya. Two real numbers. If you have two real numbers, they could never be consecutive real numbers because there's always something between them, right? So the density is like infinite. There's always going to be something between two numbers when classified as real numbers. Are there, uh, is there always something between two integers? There's always something, but, no, I'm sorry. Is there always an integer between two integers? No. No, no. integers can be consecutive. Okay, they're, they don't have to be consecutive, but they can be. Whole numbers, are they consecutive? Yeah. Can be, right? Okay, cool. Are we cool with this? Yes. yes.